audio, follow. though. Go ahead. Can we have follow up. No, I just. Well, yes, yeah, so why don't you go right ahead over there? Are we still recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. So he can finish his question. Okay. Well, it could be off camera. I, can, I don't care. I just have a question for you. So, as a follow up to what you were saying, describing me and about diabetes, and all, I'm curious how that was on you guys and, and as having a family with, you know, diabetes today is like everyone's got it. It's not a thing anymore. But well, back then. It wasn't an outfit. Back then, so it went. wasn't a. Um, you know, it was new. It was no one. No, it was family. around, but it wasn't in our family. It wasn't common. Right. We, you know, so we didn't know what to do. We weren't prepared, and we had no inkling that you had it until Zabago, and and the Dr. Everett, and the um, immediate need to take shots. And I told you the Dr. Everett story, right? You, you, I think so. You know, uh, I'm curious about the impact. I'm telling you that yeah. the impact was shock. Uh, uh, First Sebago, mom actually picked it up. Uh, and then we went to the doctor and yeah, we diagnosed. And um, Everett came in the room. First day they tested you, then he, he told me, he said, the next morning I went in and, and he said, your son has diabetes. Uh, it's not, never going away. Uh, he's gonna have to be a lifelong diabetic on shots. He said, and you're gonna have to know right now, today, how to do this, the shots and all. He said, so, lucky for you, I'm a diabetic. He said, so I'm going to teach you right here and now to give shots. I didn't know that to doctor. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. He was our pediatrician. Yeah. So, you know, normally they start to an orange or something. Yeah. He an said, yeah. you don't have time. He's going home later today. You have to know this right now. We're going to send you to nutrition class. But, so, the, the shock effect of sticking a live doctor with a needle without any training, I'd never given a shot. It was totally, like, daily to me. It was like, I'm gonna kill him, you know? And I went outside and I kicked the side of my car door in. Uh, and, and that's the reaction I had. It was like, I cannot believe it. I don't know what to do. I'm confused, sad, angry, and terrified. Right. Because uh, I didn't know anything about that. But over time, and mom, I think, was very good at understanding the nutritional aspect and beginning to integrate that dietary stuff into into. Yeah, us. she was always really good about yeah. dinner and stuff. Yeah. Right, she really got that. I was still like, I'm fighting this. Like that's not happening. Right. But she she accepted it and moved on. And then of course, the giving you the daily shots and and everything. And you fought uh, until you went not to Nina. Um, that was a shock. And then in terms of the rest of the family and the, and the shock, we just began to integrate sugar-free stuff. Remember Halloween, we take, we trade in the sugar-free candy, uh, the real yeah. candy for sugar-free. I don't know if you remember that. Vaguely, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. All Trying that. to make it smooth for everybody rather than a, a standout kind of an issue. Yeah. You know, we integrate in the family. We, we went and got diabetic, uh, sugar-free stuff, and Aunt Ro would bring sugar-free stuff, and, and stuff like that. And, and we try not to make a big deal with it. Did they, did they give a sense of doom for me? Because I remember growing up and them saying, I'll be blind by a teenager. They, no, it was, it was a cautionary thing, that if you don't take care of it, it could, it could get out of control. So, did, so you never, as a parent, never felt like, like I never have felt, a kid that's gonna die soon. I never felt you were in grave danger. I felt that if we took the right steps to protect you and to get you treatment, and you eventually accepted it, that you were not in grave danger. I felt that way too as a big sister because we had Dennis Murphy, he was a family right. friend, and he was diabetic, and he was in excellent shape, you know, sort of muscular, like a, mm -hmm. like a fit guy, and, I, and he had children, and he had a family, mm -hmm. and that calmed me. Just knowing someone else who had it, because mm -hmm. um, I didn't know Dr. Ever had it, but um, yeah, I didn't know that. But the fact that Dennis Murphy was sort of a handsome man and fit, I thought was a, a source of calm. Right, that I could be like yeah, that. Yeah, that you know, like in other words, my brother can grow and have a family and, sure. and all that too. I, I just remember that being a comforting thought. Sure. Well, I don't mean to uh, dwell on this. I just I was curious because it has to do with family dynamics and. A big, of course, a part of your life is having to. Well, as you, as you got into the training and, and then we recalibrated we your 
the, when you were around 12, or you went to the hospital, I think it was. I was in the hospital for yeah. a week. And he, he wasn't doing well with the, all, so the regimen changes, and, and, and he got treatment all the way through. We always made sure he got the right treatment. And I felt that with the right treatment and proper care, you, you'd be okay. Of, everyone knows it's a degenerative disease, so the odds increase. However, once you grappled with the fact, and this is the other thing I wanted to say about well, I was up in Binghamton many times when you did the insertion kit and all that, I felt terrible, but I said, he gets it, he, he's going to take care of himself. You know, he, he can do it and he's trained and, and he wants to manage himself best he can. It's a terrible thing. It goes up, it goes down, emotions, health, illness, but you balance it as well. And he's got, he's got it. Do you yeah. think that um, it's just the luck of the draw, like biology? Or do Nobody you think, knows. Do you think God did this? No, 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 no. It's not You're not God. angry? It's actually probably a, a, a virus that attacked the pancreas early, early in his, uh, he was sick one mm -hmm. winter. And then the following August, it, it, it emerged. Wow. It takes about six months to harvest and start attacking the pancreas. So you don't harm any ill will? Well, listen, I'd rather have him with diabetes than cancer or, yeah. you know, lung disease or right. dementia. Well, that could happen. Right. <laughs> right. But, you know, there's some yeah. more serious diseases. Right. right. This is manageable. And, yeah, you, uh, but yeah. going to the earlier question, you do feel terrible as a parent. Like, why couldn't I prevent mm -hmm. that or how can I fix it? And you have to realize this, this is life. It's a crapshoot. You don't know what's it what's around the corner. So getting back to the first question, if your values are solid and you believe in yourself and you believe there's something, some greater power helping you when you need to and guiding you through some difficult times, if you believe that and apply that, then most obstacles can be overcome. You know, if you, if you don't expect like, whoop, it's gone, or uh, here's the answer. But it's a guiding principle. And if you fall back on that and, and you realize that life is finite, that you just don't know from day to day, because Adam was so young and, and Nanny was so old, you don't know. But you do the best you can. And you believe whatever it is, if you do the best you can, you know, and, 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 you, and, and, you, and you believe that you are, you're going to be okay. No, I think our family values fighting so much, and not not like arguing, fighting, but like we're really strong personalities, and I think that we we persevere. Mm -hmm. Like we get through it. If there's an obstacle, we we kind of overcome it. We figure out a way. We're mm -hmm. you know we're creative. How do you know when to stop fighting in life? How do, is there a time where? You, like, is there a, a line where? Well, it depends on what you mean by fighting. Like, like the perseverance, the struggle, like. Having been through life all this time, is is it is it like if, if you have to work for it that much? Is it, it depends on what you're targeted to fight. I mean, you know, you can fight the weather. You ain't gonna win. No, I just or mean like the struggle of life. If you view it as a struggle, if you view it as a dance, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. but you can fight with everything, people, surroundings, events, and always be dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. Or you can make a decision mm -hmm. that you're going to take the glass half full approach and say, I have life. That's the essence. Of it. So let me make the best of what the good half of it that I do have mm -hmm. and minimize the part I, so I don't like X and this happened to me. And that, that's the bottom side, of it, the good side. And I always do this every day, affirmations in the morning. I affirm what's good about today. And, and I say to myself, well, I don't have a lot of money. I, you know, I'm fat and this and that, but look what I do have. I have this wonderful family. I have great surroundings, great in-laws, and, and joy. So, you know, if you mix a little joy and a little happiness and a little humor into your life and accept that some bad things are going to happen along the way, so you don't give up the fight in the sense of the long-term fight, but you don't want to be fighting all the time mm -hmm. because that's not healthy, mm -hmm. you know, to develop a mental outlook that this guy's a schmuck, you know, I, 
I just don't like Trump. I wanted to deal with him. I don't even watch TV. I can't. And I know him. I've, I've met him in the elevator. I don't like him, but am I going to fight CNN? Am I going to fight mm -hmm. politics in Washington? No. I'm going to live my life. And vote. Yeah, and be, and I just use it as an right. example. Right. You could choose to fight, right. but you got to pick your targets. Right, right. You know, otherwise, what the first obligation in life, you know, beyond survival, is to be joyful. God, I don't believe God put us here to be unhappy or mean. And yes, you are nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I believe, I believe He put you here, you know, to get as much joy as you can from the experience of life Joy. itself. And everybody's life is different, everybody's experience is different. But get, draw from it as, as much joy as it will bring. Because right. there's always hardship, there's going to be setbacks, there's going to be death, there's going to be sickness. But that's the definition of it. It's within the definition. So beyond that, draw from it every element of joy, happiness, love that you can. It's there for the offering if you choose to look for it. Dad, I have a question, um, kind of my